Hi, my name is Tracy Butler and I'm the Director of Links to Learning. Today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Kylie Fangalotha, who's currently working at In Leaps and Bounds. Today Kylie's going to share with us a bit about the work that she does there. Welcome Kylie and thank you for taking time out of your busy day to share this time with us. I'm wondering if you can start by giving us an understanding of how long you've been working with um, children with difficulties. Thanks, Tracy. Well, I'm a mother of four and have been for 20 years, so you could say I've been looking after kids for that long. But in my paid job of looking after kids, it's been probably about five years now. Excellent. We certainly learn a lot from our own children, I think, more than we ever learn from a textbook. I want to focus on the listening program, Kylie. Can you tell me um, how that started and, and where you first learnt about it? Well, I work in a paediatric centre, working with families and kids with special needs. And I was in a music program there that supported the speech and occupational therapies here. And one of our members here came across a listening program. And as we learn a bit more about it, we've just, a number of us decided just to get trained in it so we could offer those services to the wider community just to undergird the therapies that are already happening here. Fantastic. And can you tell me what sort of um, improvements you've seen in the children that you've been using that listening program with? Well, it's just been quite amazing because not only do we see changes in the individual, but also the, the, the families as a whole because as the child begins to improve, so does the environment in, environment in the home. So the stresses of dealing with a high, high needs child, as the child becomes, be, becomes more settled and at peace with themselves and the world around them, so hence that's also going to carry on into how the family interacts and um, is with each other. But um, some of the, the um, changes that we're seeing um, directly, uh, auditory processing, um, seen some great improvements with the auditory processing and with that of course it affects their schooling so then um, reading and writing is improved. Um, they're now hearing frequencies that they couldn't hear before so are able to hear sounds and repeat what they're being, what they're hearing and then being able to uh, write it down. Uh, and it's also influencing how they're interacting with people. So their confidence levels are up. They're no longer feeling like they're dummies that don't know anything. They're not getting, um, feeling that intimidation um, that they may get from their peers because their peers are going, don't you know anything? You know, aren't you hearing? You're not playing the game the way we want it. So uh, children are actually hearing what's being communicated. So they're able to fit into their social groups and interact socially. So now they're playing with other children rather than just side by side play or by themselves. Um, their uh, academic results have had quite a number of uh, children, both in primary and high school, where their academic results um, just really skyrocketed, um, where reading levels were very low, very, very low. And um, within a short period of time went well above the normal the normal range for their age group and at the end of the year they got um, recognition for most improved academically, most improved socially and things like that, which is great, really good. Um, other things that we see um, improvement is things like um, sound sensitivities. Um, so whether that's through trauma or discomfort, we find that because the frequencies are being released in a very gentle way, um, the sound sensitivities that they would have and the fear that is induced by them um, is just declining or just disappears altogether, which is really good. We're finding kids um, noticing, realising how they actually fit into the world around them. So um, they're hearing the birds chirp and the click, the, the top, the clock ticking. And, um, you know, when a car's coming, they will look and see where that the car's coming their way so they know where to stop for. Where mum's in the room, she's up the other end of the house, they know where the direction is at. So, you know, with those special needs children, depending what the needs are, we're seeing the changes, you know. Some of those high need, change, high, need high care children that we might have, um, say, with uh, non-verbal children, um, beginning to make vocal sounds that they've not made before, um, where before they might just give up and give up just trying to communicate in their own way what they need or what they want, becoming more insistent now, you know, making the verbal noises and becoming more insistent in, in, in trying to communicate what it is that they're wanting and what it is that they're needing and 
um, interacting a lot more with um, those around them, which is um, fantastic, you know. Yeah. Other things like um, emotional regulation. So because uh, the, it, it also helps with anxiety, stress, post-traumatic stress disorders and things like that. So um, the uh, stress levels that, that the children or even the adults are feeling are declining. So I, I actually have not only the children coming on board, but also other members of the family. So sometimes the parents might have similar needs or they have their own needs entirely different. You know, I've had some parents get on to deal with their stress levels at work and um, finding it difficult to sleep. And so it's um, their circadian rhythms are starting to come into balance again and, and they're sleeping better and their stress is um, declining. And, you know, I've, I had, um, you know, have children where they're actually noticing the difference, you know, the times where they've come to, okay, it's time to get onto a maintenance program and then, then they start to feel undone again or the parents can start to recognise they're coming undone again and it's, okay, let's get back on, let's get back on again. And, and the children, you know, they, they pick up, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Memory, concentration, all of those kind of things, big, big changes. Yeah. I really like the way that you raised the point at the beginning there, Kylie, of it not only impacting the child, about it impacting the whole family, because I think that that's very, very true. And, and it's wonderful that you're transferring that program knowledge that was initially prim primarily focused on the child to then supporting the parents with the stress and, and the challenges um, that they're having. Um, what I'd like to do now is, is um, transfer to your website for people to have a look at how they can get in touch with you. So Kylie's um, based, as I said, in leaps and bounds. You can go to their website and you can view the services that they provide, um, speech pathology, group therapy, assessment psychology, um, working with children with autism and OT. Um, there's some information there on funding along with the contact us um, button. So I encourage you to reach out. If you'd like to contact Kylie directly, she can be reached on mobile number 044 7459911 and I encourage you to reach out if you have concerns regarding your child as you've heard Kylie has a, a wealth of information and a passion for helping children and I'm sure that um, she can make a difference um, to your child's life and um, as we said bring about a, a happier home um, in general. So thank you Kylie for sharing your time today we really appreciate it and enjoyed meeting you. Thanks a lot Tracy. Thank you.